Let's see what um, what has been prepared today. So I know I've done a lot of videos here recently on foods that I've made, and I've cooked a, quite a bit of food. But um, and I I packed this one in such a way where I wanted to preserve uh, more of the temperature, but also minimize spillage. And so and um, so and I don't mind spillage actually. I just want to make sure I eat this in the proper layer. So this is uh, lentils and mushrooms. So lentils and mushrooms together. And I got a few other ingredients uh, in there as well. Oh, it's, it's um, actually a lettuce salad. That was a leftover. Um, and I decided to just actually cook that lettuce uh, salad, right? And then, um, and then, Underneath, I got some rice that I will um, show. And then, um, once I get to the rice, I'm going to uh, uh, bring that into picture and uh, let you know how it all went. By the way, the spice level on this is a lot better. Um, medium heat all the way through. I set it on low at the very end. And this entire thing, I let it simmer for about 25 minutes exactly. And... Um, it came out extremely well, extremely well. One of my goals today was to have a more liquidly, liquidy uh, base to this meal preparation um, because you want liquid that helps the digestion, right? In some of my meals, I emphasized taste and that was not really the right move. Um, so I made sure I uh, balanced the preparation with more liquid uh, because that helps the body a lot more in terms of hydration of the cells right and you can drink water you can drink other things but it's really good when you can have a hydration aspect to your food and consume that as part of the meal itself and it infuses the food with more vitality and it allows better flow of things like herbs and spices and to the extent you add them, uh, salts, right? And so that's um, why this has more of a soupy orientation um, because uh, soupy meals, in my opinion, are going to work best for digestion and processing in the system than their less soupy counterparts. If you can clearly see them, um, I have sesame seeds, right? Black sesame seeds. I went with black sesame seeds. And I also added hemp seeds. My plan is to add sesame seeds and hemp seeds to nearly every meal. And I have known about hemp seeds for a while, as well as sesame seeds. I learned about the, the benefits of sesame seeds from Dr. Eric Berg. And I learned about the benefits of hemp seeds from Dr. Bobby Price. Dr. Bobby Price says, along with chia seeds, hemp seeds have all the nine essential amino acids and can help you build proteins right there in the body. And then of course I got these lentils which has their own proteins. And then you have sesame seeds, which is a source of either, let me see if I got this right, magnesium, Right, I think it might be magnesium, but you also have um, copper in some varieties of uh, sesame seeds. It makes it more bi bioavailable. So these these are sprouted lentils that's in here. You can see the little tails. And having spent many years uh, doing the traditional lentils, right. These taste consider considerably better. They can taste considerably better. All right, so this part of the meal is done. I found that very thoroughly satisfying. Let's see what's in the next next part here. Okay. So this is rice with seaweed. I've never had this before. I just decided to put this together because sea vegetables have an immense amount of vital nutrients. 
again, I was informed by Dr. Bobby Price about the benefits of sea vegetables in his latest video, three deficiencies, right? On how to deal with them. I found uh, this discussion. And I also left some of the rice liquid in here because I wanted to keep this rice relatively moist, but I see that the rice has absorbed the liquid, which is fine. I did pre-salt uh, this rice. So it already has salt in it, but you also got the natural salt from the seaweed. And this is actual, uh, dry, the dried seaweed you can get in the store. And then when you put it in liquid, it expands it back out. And so I'm gonna eat this and um, it's gonna be good for my nutrition. I believe the seaweed has calcium in it and it is a stronger um, form of calcium. Also early this morning, I did have um, some almond milk I know I normally do coconut milk, but they were out of the coconut milk that I normally did do. And so I decided to try uh, almond uh, chocolate almond milk. The chocolate almond milk, uh, ironically, had no added sugars compared to the vanilla uh, almond milk. I didn't want to do the unsweetened almond milk for some reason, but I decided to do the chocolate almond milk. So that would save me a step in adding cocoa powder. I still mix the almond milk with coconut water and I treated the coconut water with um, cocoa powder. And so I found a combination of the two, not as taste satisfying as when I add uh, coconut milk, but it was still adequate. But anyway, um, I'm gonna get a huge dose of calcium from this. And so when you combine calcium and magnesium, you get uh, better muscle contractions and expansion. Dr. Bobby Price explains this extremely well. Um, what is that, uh, calcium? I might have this backwards, but calcium helps with muscle contraction and magnesium helps with muscle relax, relaxation, right? And you need both to have proper movement of the muscles. So that that is my actual goal with this uh, combination. So I'm actually finding this to be pretty, pretty good. You could act, enhance the flavor with a little bit more salt, but I'm glad I didn't bring any salt with me because I don't want to load my system up with so much sodium, right? I get enough sodium from other sources, right? The coconut water that I consume has a sodium, right? It's a more bioavailable version of sodium. And um, the seaweed here has sodium in it. It's a more, again, a bioavailable. The, the body's going to be able to process this. And I want to revisit my early comment about the water that I left in here. I now realize that it's probably not the rice that absorbed all that water. It's the seaweed that used that water to 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 uh, work uh, towards its expansion. And it, I'm glad I did that because my original plan was just to let the steam of the rice do the work of the expansion. And I realized that would have been a mistake because I wouldn't have gotten proper expansion of the seaweed. And so this, this turned out to be quite awesome. And again, I used the same water that I uh, used to simmer the rice, right? And um, this is the last of this rice. I got a small little box of rice pilaf. And then when I use that up, I won't be making rice again for a while. I am going to uh, uh, go with my overall approach, which is to reduce my consumption of grains. And so, but I thought that while I had some grains, I might as well put it to good use. Um, as I start to de-emphasize legumes a little bit in, in the coming week or weeks, I'm going to emphasize, uh, I'm gonna go back to emphasizing greens. And so um, I'm gonna have more salads uh, in the upcoming days and weeks um, than I have been uh, here in the last week. So I think that's gonna be a good um, shift um, back to the more raw side of the, the, the diet. But this here, as it's been made, is absolutely fabulous.